is scoliosis hereditary? During consultations with scoliosis patients, very often I'm talking to them or asking them questions regarding their scoliosis history or family history, meaning does anybody in their family also have scoliosis like cousins, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers. And very often this brings up the question is, is scoliosis hereditary? Meaning is there a specific gene or something that you're passing on to to family members that could cause them to have or develop scoliosis. And this debate has been going on for years whether scoliosis is genetic or not. Because we tend to see family members uh, in one family, maybe multiple family members have scoliosis, but not everybody does. So we know scoliosis has family tendencies, but it's not genetically caused. And this is true. Despite years of research, there's been no specific gene that's been identified to actually cause idiopathic scoliosis. And they've even done studies with identical twins. These are patients with the exact same same DNA and they find patients that even they have the exact same DNA, one patient could have scoliosis and one won't. So we know there's other factors involved in the causation and development of scoliosis. It's not just genetic. But there is family tendencies, meaning if somebody in your family has scoliosis, there is a higher chance of somebody else in your family developing scoliosis, but we don't think it's 100% genetic. There's other factors, and we don't really understand what those other factors are. We just know they're there. So what causes scoliosis? Well, the question really depends on what type of scoliosis you're talking about. We know that 80% of all cases of scoliosis are idiopathic, meaning there's no known cause. And we don't know what it is. We don't know if it's just a genetic component, if there's a um, you know, traumatic component, if there is some type of developmental component, if there's a deficiency component. We don't know. 80% are considered idiopathic, meaning an unknown cause. Nobody could really tell you why. It's just, it just is. The other 20% have a, associated with causes, and this is something called neuromuscular scoliosis. This is when a patient has a neuromuscular condition, like uh, Marfan, cerebral palsy, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, neurofibromatosis, and they develop scoliosis as well. Well, these neuromuscular conditions are typically um, connective tissue disorders or some kind of neurological disorder that develop a scoliosis as a result of the syndrome itself. Congenital scoliosis, this is mean that you're born with a bone that's not fully formed in the spine correctly. Instead of forming into a full vertebra, it formed into something called a hemivertebra. If you're born this way, this is truly congenital scoliosis. Degenerative scoliosis is what happens to adult patients when something happens, some kind of trauma that leads to misalignment in the spine. The mis this misalignment manifests itself into a scoliosis that becomes very degenerative, and, th and that's normally a consequence of the fourth type, which is something called traumatic scoliosis. Severe trauma to the spine can cause the spine to shift and develop a scoliosis and a curvature. But the majority of cases is idiopathic, and most people who deal with scoliosis consider scoliosis to be multifactorial, meaning there's more than one cause and more than one factor that goes from one person to the next that can actually actually lead to the causation of scoliosis. In fact, some patients may have multiple factors within themselves. We really don't know. And that becomes treating scoliosis or treating idiopathic scoliosis somewhat difficult because if we don't know exactly what's causing it, nobody could ever cure it. But if we don't know what causes it, could that affect the outcome or affect the way we treat it? Maybe or maybe not. And uh, I like to talk about the understanding the cause of scoliosis like understanding the cause of earthquakes. We know exactly what causes an earthquake. I mean, the plates shift, it causes the earthquake, buildings, you know, get, structures get damaged and they collapse. But despite the fact, after the earthquake, it doesn't matter what caused it. We have to rebuild the building because the earthquake caused a structural problem to the buildings, and therefore rebuilding the building is what's important. We believe it's very similar when it comes to scoliosis. Something happens and causes a scoliosis, it causes a small structural deviation, and causes the scoliosis to start. However, as the scoliosis sits there, it becomes its own problem. It becomes a structural concern. So despite not knowing the cause, it may, we still have to treat the curve like the curve, like you would have to take care of the building after the earthquake. So really searching out the causation of your scoliosis may not even affect your treatment and more than likely will not affect the outcome if you would treat the scoliosis because very often the scoliosis is diagnosed much, much further away than when the actual causation occurred. So if you are diagnosed with uh, idiopathic scoliosis, how do you treat it? You treat the scoliosis like you would treat the structural problem. Here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we treat idiopathic scoliosis by 
developing customized treatment plans that use a very different, very multimodal approach for scoliosis-specific treatment, like scoliosis-specific chiropractic care, therapy, rehabilitation, exercises, scoliosis-specific bracing, and these are all designed to help reduce and manage the scoliosis. Very often, I have patients that come to me and they really want to know, well, why do I have it? Why did I get it? What caused it to happen? And unfortunately, nobody has that answer. There are a lot of theories and a lot of correlations into why we think, but the truth is all those correlations don't apply to all people, meaning there are people that have that same problem and don't get scoliosis, and there are people that do, that do, that, that do get scoliosis. So since there's no... Um, underlining cause, we consider it multifactorial. There are a lot of things that can lead to a curve happening, so the curve is a result or a symptom of another problem. However, untreated, that symptom now becomes the problem itself, and you have to address the scoliosis. So not knowing the cause will not always affect our treatment. The, treat, the scoliosis still can be treated effectively, if you, even without knowing why, but we know how to reduce the scoliosis, we can definitely have a proactive and effective approach to scoliosis treatment. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.